Good morning, guys. So there's nothing worse than your mother-in-law telling you how to be a mother. My mother-in-law came over the other day, and she saw that he was in his rocking chair. And mind you, he was awake the whole entire day. So I finally put him on the rocking chair for him to just chill, and he knocked out. Which is awesome for me. I, I was able to start taking care of things in the house, cleaning the house, cooking for my husband and for all of us. Um, she comes in, and she's like, Oh my God, what is he doing there? You're going to mess up his growth. I'm like, he's fine. He doesn't go in there that often. And when he's there, he's, he's fine. I, he's positioned well. No, you're messing up his neck. He can't even hold up his neck. I'm like, he's not even three months old yet. He's going to get there on his own time. You need to take care of him better. Do not tell me how to take care of my child. Get out, like now. So part two. So we were driving as fast as we could. My mom was literally telling me that. She was telling her all kinds of shit that I was doing, that I was controlling Mitchell, that she should control me. And my mom was not having it. She, my mom told her to get the fuck out, to not talk bad about me because I'm his her daughter. So as soon as my mom told her to get the fuck out, that we were going our way, they fucking left so quick. But I was already on my way. I was fucking pissed. I was ready to fight this. So uh, we ended up going to her auntie's house and he, they never showed up. So my husband got on the phone with them and they were literally telling him that I was the fucking devil, that he married a snake, that I was a slut, and that I was controlling and that I beat him. Let me remind you that my husband is six feet and I am 4'11". Nobody controls my husband. He has fucking hairs on his balls. He makes his own decisions. He's grown now. The next day, they called us saying that Mitchell stole his mom's credit card when we haven't seen him in forever. on today's episode of things my mother-in-law has done that was weird so we were going out of town and we asked his mom if she could watch the house and one of the rooms we left locked and kept the key because he was growing plants so we get back after like a week or so and the first day we get back, she pulls him aside and she talks to him about the plants. And then he tells me about it. And I said, so you're telling me that she found a way to unlock the door and snoop in the house and she snooped through our stuff? Like, why does she need to go upstairs? And he was like, yeah, that's my mom. That's, that's what she does. She like snoops in the house. So you want to know what I did the next time she watched the house? I grabbed all the toys that me and her son use, and I put them all over my closet. All over, just out and open. You're welcome. Have you ever been so furious that you just start crying? Because you literally just want to beat, beat someone's ass, but you can't? Bro. She has an audacity to disrespect my mother too, bro. She said, I don't need to make appointments when I come to see my son. She told me to my face. She got close to my face and said, he's taking everything for me not to hit you. I was like praying to God, Lord, please let this woman hit me. Please, 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 please. But she didn't. She started calling me all these, all these names in the book. I walk out, she was crying to my husband about god knows what talking shit about me my husband's like telling her you just came here to start problems that's all you came here to do is start problems she's like ma'am there's just so much to explain bro i'm gonna have to like explain this and like other tiktoks i know i shouldn't but i have to I don't know how I made it to the toxic mother-in-law side of TikTok, but let me tell you, I'm here for it, sis. So on that note, story time. Put a finger down if you and your husband got married and he's in the Navy, so you moved to California with your son, who he has since taken as his own baby and adopted and loved and supports. But you guys are living in California after you got married and you are pregnant, like two, three months pregnant with your second baby, your first together, and your mother-in-law um, sends a Valentine's Day card addressed to only your husband. And the card that she bought says, I hope you find love and happiness. And it's signed, love, mom. I hope that you find love. And you're married. And pregnant. Just me? Okay. Well, that's on toxic mother-in-laws. And there's lots more where that came from if this takes off. 
Dear mother-in-law, I don't need you to tell me how to raise my children because I live with one of yours and he needs a lot of work. So to all of us who have absolute horrible mother-in-laws, mine just came over. Guess what she said to me? Wow, estás bien gorda. I had a baby less than two months ago, and I look good. Now, what's your excuse? So I actually have a story for this. Um, my mother-in-law came over one day with his sister, because it's only his mom and his sister that are here from Venezuela. Everyone else is over there. Um, so he just has his mom and his sister here. So, <laughs> so one day I was cooking and then I'm like, what is going on? I hear some sniffling and crying outside, but I can't mix. Like I can't hear what the words were. My husband comes inside after they left and I'm like, why didn't they come inside? She's like, he's like, you won't believe what they said. <laughs> She's trying to take you away from us. We can never come here. She's a bad person. Mind you, I never say anything. They come over here and if, let's say they help, they want help doing something, I'll help them. But the second I don't help them, I'm the worst person alive. And that's on manipulative mother. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye. Bye. Andale. Andale, sí. Andale. Sí. Andale, pues. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Okay. Bye. 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 Well, see, that's the thing. This is my relationship with my husband, not yours. Um, secondly, my husband is aware that for seven years I have been dealing with nothing but torture and mistreatment and disrespect from his mother. And I've eaten it. I've taken it. I have allowed her to do so much. And now I'm finally standing my ground. I have a backbone. And I say things to her and she is aware. And she still continues. So, and he's stepped in and he's stuck up for me. And like I said, he is 100% aware that I post this in public and he is a hundred percent okay with it our situation might be different than something that you are going through or that another person might be going through but I don't expect for you to understand that it's my business I can say what I want on social media but thank you so much for your input once again really I appreciate it so much Story time. So the other day I was completely asleep and the baby was sleeping as well. Mind you, we were both sleeping because he had just had his first bottle of the day and he wanted to take a nap. So we were both sleeping. And she's over here knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell. And she called me eight times. Eight freaking times. Now my husband wasn't home, so I didn't answer. And I didn't answer the phone calls either. So pretty much she didn't come inside. Um, and that was the actual day that my husband had to put her in her place because she started calling him and saying all this crap about me. But listen, listen, I'm not home. I'm just not home. You know, I'm unavailable at the moment. You have to go visit some of your friends or something because I'm unavailable. Unless your son is home, mark me as unavailable. Okay? Oh, baby girl, listen, one thing I always tell myself, I chose to marry my husband because I love him. I did not choose his family. I chose him, not his family. Him, not his family. Sometimes we don't choose what our in-laws are going to be like or what his family is going to be like or how they're going to act or how they're going to be. But all that's important is that we chose to be with them 
for them, not for their family. Um, my advice to you is stand your ground. Always, always stand your ground. And on top of that, make sure your husband or spouse or who, whoever you're with, make sure that they're on the same page as you and that they stick up for you because my husband didn't stick up for me until, what, <laughs> six and a half years later? <laughs> Yikes. It happens. Stay strong. You got this, girl. Since we all love my mother-in-law story times, how about I start telling you about my mother-in-law's mother, Mick's grandmother. And most people might say, oh, an innocent old grandmother. Don't do that because you're wrong. I've been with Mick since the end of high school. Holy shit, that's nearly 20 years. So we are currently in a beef, our longest running one. This includes Mick, no contact. But I will get to that later. Let me start from the beginning. This woman is a volatile narcissist. How volatile, you ask? Well, once, when I had a sleepover with Mick in year 12 or school holidays, and she'd woken both of us up to say that she's made bacon and eggs for breakfast. I found the toxic mother-in-law side of TikTok and it is where I belong. Um, so I thought I'd just do a nice little put a finger down for, um, my mother-in-law. Shout out to you, Lori. So put a finger down if you sent your mother-in-law a nice message on Mother's Day saying that you hope she had a great day. And then she took it really offensively. So she had your father-in-law call your parents and yell at them and say that they need to control their daughter. And then your father-in-law called you repeatedly on Mother's Day while you're trying to work on your PhD exam and then he wouldn't stop calling and so he sent you a like 500 word text message saying shame on you multiple times and then your mother-in-law sent a really nice email to your husband saying that he was being brainwashed and manipulated by way of an unhealthy relationship with his wife. My mother then told her if you're not going to reason, mind you, I want you guys to keep in mind my husband this whole time is trying everything to get her on the same page as all of us. And she's like, no. And then my husband, this was the breaking point when she told my mom, you guys are the same, so I don't want to hear anything from you. My husband goes, you know what? You're not coming here again. If you can't call me, don't come. Do not come to my house if you can't call me. And guess what? Even if you call me and you do come to my house, do not even plan. If you have even a plan of coming here and talking poorly about my wife, do not come. You are not welcome here with negativity. You are not welcome here unannounced. And that's how it's going to be. When my mom came inside and told me how my husband was standing up for me and standing his ground, it was insane. So I'm just sitting here changing the baby's diaper, as you can see his little feet, and lo and behold, I get a notification from my camera, a notification from my camera. What does it say? That my husband's mother arrived, right? Did she call? No. Did she just show up because she felt like it? Yeah. Well, guess what? Today's the day you guys are going to actually see her. What you guys just saw was her crying. Just letting you know. She started crying like a baby coming over here to talk shit about me. Because that's what she always fucking does. So she was just here right now talking shit about me crying to my husband. Well, I went up there and I had to say everything in my life to her. Because I'm tired of her. I'm tired. That's it. This is it. And she's calling me a bad person and all this stuff because she wants to sit there and talk shit about me to my husband in my own fucking house. She needs to get the fuck out of my house is what she needs to do. Enough is enough. I'm